guys, welcome to a Saturday Sam and I are out to do our Saturday stuff. What are we doing today, Sam? Oil change. A mail truck. change. Oil change for the truck. Are you getting coffee first? Oh yeah. Coffee. Coffee, an oil change, some supplements for our horses, and crickets, crickets for our bearded dragon. So many things. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys what happened to me. Okay, so I'm gonna try and make this quick so it doesn't take up the whole vlog, but this is super crazy. And I apologize for the sound of the truck. It's always noisy to vlog in here. Okay, so I always dream stuff. I always dream stuff that comes true. I told you guys that before. So I often dream little tiny bits of a dream and then one day I'll just dream the whole dream and I'll remember it. And that is what happened this day. I dreamed this crazy dream. I dreamed that I was at that I drove down this road and I hit a cross rail so it could go four ways. At the end of the road was this beach and on this beach was this beautiful house and in the house was this beautiful woman. This was a woman that I know from my soul. I know her and I yearn for her and I love this woman from my soul, not from my personality. It's such a bizarre, crazy, different feeling. So I, so I was driving down this road and I had Gabby and Kaylee and Sophie in the back of my car. And we drove down the road and um, actually how it started was that I was driving down a road and all of a sudden the road got really bumpy and it bumped me onto this other road and we were driving down this road and all of a sudden I remembered that I've been on this road before and we ended up at the end of the road and it was a beach house this beautiful house on the beach and we went inside and I said to Kaylee Kaylee let's go in here I want to show you this lady she's amazing and I want to show you her stuff because this lady had all the things I love she's into purses and boots and shoes and all the things that I love in life and I love this lady so much so we visited this lady for a little while and then we left because we needed to get home and so we started to drive back up the road and when we got to the intersection I could go right or left or straight and so I chose to go left and when I went left I was taken to this other lady's property where she was this lady and she was like very mean and angry and she was always saying mean things and swearing and but I knew her heart and I knew her soul and I knew her and I loved her and so it was easy for me to look past all those awful things and just love her for who she was like it was so emotional and so empowering and so anyways we stopped there we went to the washroom and she said hey Laura do you want some vegetables out of my garden and it was just beautiful and I reflected on the fact that some people might not like this lady but how I knew her real self and that if you just look past all that yucky stuff you can see the beauty inside other people so we got back in the car we got back to the cross rail roads and I never went in the right direction I never turned that right direction I don't know why so then we started driving straight and I got lost and I couldn't get out and every time I drive straight back up that road towards home I would get turned around and I'd be back at the beach house or I'd be back at the other lady's house like I couldn't get out of there and and I loved these ladies and it just was such a bizarre dream and I kept on saying trying to phone Sam and say Sam we're lost we need help to get home and I couldn't I couldn't dial his number and Gabby said use your GPS <laughs> Gabby said use your GPS and finally and no matter what happened I would always end up back at the crossroads and I couldn't get out of there and then all of a sudden I ran into my sister and her husband Jenny and Dave she's the one that is the animal control officer and so so I met up with them and they're like don't worry I will show you how to get home and they direct me and I followed them home and that's where the dream ends and you're probably thinking wow that's such a weird dream it's so symbolic it's blah 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 but that is not where the dream ends all right so it was a very powerful dream and I felt so many emotions I felt love for these ladies that I don't even know in real life I felt a love for them where I want to cry because I miss them like in real life like just sitting here I could cry because I miss those ladies and I want to be with them I've never even ever met them like that's how profound it was so this is where it gets crazy the other day I was driving with Gabby and Kaylee and Sophie and yeah this really happened and we ended up taking a detour down a road that we never really gone before because we were looking for something um, so we just started driving down this road and we're looking for our friend's house and we're driving and we're looking at all the houses and we're looking at all the houses and we get halfway down this road and then suddenly that dream in my head overpowered me it was like it was like I wasn't even driving my car it was like me in this dream was driving this car and I I, I saw 
that we were on this road and if we just kept driving I was gonna get to this crossroads and I was gonna get to this beach house which is where I wanted to go it was like a feeling of going home of being with this woman of knowing this woman and like oh so powerful so I'm driving the car and the girls are all chatting and talking and all of a sudden I'm like oh my god I'm about to go home I'm about to go there like I just wanted to put my foot on the gas and fly down this road and go there and I was like I'm going like I'm actually going there like it was so surreal and then I did not go I did not go down to the end of the road we stopped and we turned around and we went back because I suddenly felt like scared and not scared like oh my god where are we gonna go are we gonna get lost like I felt scared that I wasn't actually going to meet these people and be on the right road. I felt like nervous that it wasn't going to happen. And then so I was like, yeah, we better turn around. So then we turned around. But yeah, how weird is that? Is that weird? Tim, tell me your thoughts. Was the dream metaphoric? And when what happened when I actually was driving on this road with the girls in the car? And then it came over me. Like I wasn't even thinking about the dream. All of a sudden, it was like my soul was saying, go, Laura, just go. It's happening. And I was like, it was the most. It was like the greatest love and emotion you could feel like and feeling like you could only feel if you were in heaven like such strong powerful love and yearning from my soul all right sam diagnose my dream what happened what are you feeling should have went because our future farm might have been there yeah and so that's where it gets even more crazy i know you're thinking laura it can't get any more crazy than that but it does so we only drove halfway down that road and we didn't get to see where it went and it's because i needed to step back from it and not be so powerfully affected and i had three girls in the car <laughs> They were unaware of what, what that inner turmoil that was happening inside of me. And I wanted to appear normal <laughs> because it did not feel normal. So then a couple days later, Sam said to me, Oh, Laura, there's another farm. I think we should look at it. I think you would like it. And he said that he showed me the farm before many times on the uh, listings and that I didn't like it. That I keep telling him I don't like it. I don't like it. So I looked at the farm on the computer and suddenly my heart was different and I felt more open to it and I said well you know I do like this and this and this and he said yeah well, let's go drive by it yeah you guys know what where this is going right so we start driving to this farm to drive by and see if we like it and it's down the road that I was driving with the girls so yeah there's that <laughs> just to make it even more confusing and more crazy Anyways, I don't know what's happening with that farm. We did drive by it. I do like it. It's in my heart a little bit. It's way at the top of our budget. And I don't know. We're still feeling it out. I'm a slow person to process things. You never know what will happen. If it's meant to happen, it will happen. But I just wanted to share that story with you. I tried to share it with you a long time ago when I had the dream the first time. Um, but then it got too long for the video and I had to cut it out. But yeah, I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Was my dream metaphoric? Was I actually traveling down a road that I had dreamed and was about to get someplace that what meant something to me? Um, tell me what you guys think and maybe, just maybe, Sam and I will take the trip later today and drive down that road and see where it ends. Yeah? So some of the things that we bought today at the tax store, we bought this. Usually I buy a big giant bucket for $200 because it lasts me for two months. This is almost $100 and it only lasts me a few weeks, a couple weeks. Uh, we also bought us some crickets. When we pulled into the driveway, Gracie was rolling, you guys. Rolling around and she was laying on the ground mid-roll, stopping to eat the grass. She was laying on the ground mid-roll, snacking on the grass. Yeah, it was super cute. Sadly, a lot of my plants were not very happy with the snow and the ice that we got the other day and they'd be looking kind of rough. Horse, I turned around and all the horses are like, all right, let's go in. We're ready to go in now. Oh, you're such a cute pony. Yes, you are. Aw, it's okay. It's just me. I just love you guys. All right, we'll I'll get the girls and we'll take you in. See, that's what I mean. Like, I think Penny feels heard. I think they... They know that we listen. Like, they just told us. They, they just came and said to me, we're ready. We're ready for our, our afternoon nap. Hi. I know I keep bragging about it, but our horses are so easy to catch now. They, they know the schedule. They know what's happening. You guys know, and they love their naps. Oh, you got dirt on you. I lost my tooth. 
She finally lost her tooth. They're stuffed. You know like how sometimes something tastes so good? And you're like, oh, I can't stop eating. Somebody take it away. That's how the mares are when, when food. They're like, take me away. <laughs> and then also, they come and stand in here and they like to get out of the sun and away from the bugs and they just like to have their nap. Willow will be looking bloated, but she'll go back to normal. We'll see you later, girlies. Have a good nap. <laughs> go in the sun, it's warmer. Yeah, go out in the sun. They love it in here. They love this warmer, arena. Ah, uh, Pen, Penny Pickle. If I had my sweater on, I'd have treats because. I know, I don't have any treats either. <sighs> Sophie just tried to nitpick me. I put Penny's halter on and she was like, oh, the little tag is sticking in the wrong direction. And I, and I said, you stop that right now. That is what you call nitpicking. And a lot of the hate that happens to us on our channel is nitpicking. People think that I got a big, huge, long mes message from somebody today saying, you know, it's because you don't put enough enough shavings in their stall. Can I go with dad to go get gas? Sure, but what they don't know is that Penny has three bags of shavings in her stall at all times. And what they don't know is that we purposely don't fill the top third of the stall with shavings because that's where she eats. And I don't want her eating shavings. So it's all pushed back. And what they don't know is that that there is this phenomenon, and I know people are gonna say what they want, but there's this phenomenon where things look one way and are a different way. We don't use hay bags because they are uh, added risk that you put in a stall, and some people love them, and I'm not prepared to add that extra risk to my horses. But, I wanna tell you guys another story. Today's the day of stories. So this is something I probably never would've shared before, but I'm gonna share it. There was this lady that followed us or that watched because they liked the horses and I love this lady to this day. I still love this lady. She was a very smart, very educated, a very professional woman who took care of many horses that were like high level horses. She's a rehabilitator and she was an expert on herbal medicine and she was an expert on diet in horses. She was like this woman that I respect to this day and a woman that had so much information to share. Like I have talked about this woman so many times in my own personal life because that's how much she means to me. And even to this day, I still love this lady. And one day she was watching her video and she said, sent me a message and she said, Laura, call your vet right away. Storm is stocking up. I didn't even know what stocking, this is how I learned what stocking up is. So she said, call him now. And I was like, are you sure? Like, I don't think he's stocking up. So I talked to my, my trainer and she's like, no, he's not stocking up. And, and then so, uh, she said, no, Laura, I, I, I'm, sh I'm telling you, she watched the video and she said like, he is for sure stocking up and this is something you have to treat right away. You need a blood test, call your vet. And you know, I know this lady knows she, she, she's a brilliant lady. So I called my vet. I went against my trainer's advice and I called the vet and I met him there and I said, you know, like I think he's stocking up. He's moving funny. This is storm. You guys know, like it's his feet are always his issue. And so the vet came and he said, you know, like we had just recently taken off Storm's shoes and we didn't talk about that that much in the vlog. Like we, we, didn't, we don't discuss every single thing that we do. So not everybody knows every single part of every single story. They just know little tiny bits, which is hard. And so we talked about him, he did an examination and he said, oh, you can see where you took off the shoes recently, how he's, uh, he's loading, he's walking on the, the sides of his feet. He's wearing the sides of his feet down. I think that you should put his shoes back on. And we said, yeah, okay. We had planned to put his shoes back on anyway. The next time the farrier came, it was just a trial. The farrier and us were, were trying to figure out if he could go without shoes. So we decided to put the shoes back on and I said, I want him to have a blood test for stocking up. And he said, Lori, he doesn't have any signs of stocking up. I'm like, no, I want to have a blood test. Like I was so adamant and I made him do the blood test and he was laughing at me. And I'm like, no, I, like, I know that people know what they're talking about. I know that people have knowledge and education and this lady to this, I mean, this lady is a genius lady. Like, and so he did the blood test and he called me later and he said, no, he's not stocking up. And I was like, phew. Good. <laughs> and even though I love that lady, it made me realize that it is impossible to diagnose a horse over the over a video. It is impossible to diagnose a horse that you don't know every single situation with. It's impossible to diagnose a gait. It's impossible to diagnose anything 
over a video and that is the day that I stopped doing every single thing that people said even people that I verified and made sure had so much more knowledge than me I feel I felt so lucky to have her and have her expertise available to us and I still do absolutely but I realize that some things are impossible to do over a video and that's just one of them another thing is people are talking about how all of our horses have colicked and willow colicked. It turned out willow did, willow did not even colic at all. She had ulcers. She had an ulcer flare and that's what she was dealing with. None of our horses except for Sabrina, knock on wood, have actually ever colicked. I said I think she's colicking because we make daily videos. We didn't know what it was at the moment but it turned out that she was just having a uh, colic flare and yeah. And she did struggle with that for a little bit of time until we found the exact perfect supplement to prevent it. And so yeah, there's that story. I just wanted to explain and probably all the people that came and rushed on that video and were complaining aren't even gonna watch this video. But I do wanna explain and I know that a lot of the fault with the misinformation that happens out there is my own because I don't address every single situation. I don't explain every single situation because like this video, it would take up all the video space and I would have a video of just me talking. Penny's like, stop talking, give me carrots. <laughs> right, Penny Pickle? Anyway, on with the video. I'm going back up to the house. The girls are going back up to the house. I need to work on my garden and I need to eat something. Right, it is cricket time today. Oh my gosh, we have a ton of crickets. Why didn't you tell me? Look at all those crickets. Mom, what? What? Just bring anything. Bring a potato. They're on the microwave. What? Bring a potato. They're on the microwave. So this is all the debris that crickets have. Uh, this is this is what they oops, this is what they often eat. They've eaten out this whole piece of potato. It's disgusting. I know I've said this before, but for anybody new, uh, this is what we do every two weeks. We clean out all the yucky old stuff. Did you guys know that crickets shed their skin? They shed their skin, and we clean it all out and we put new crickets in. So their house is all clean now. We're gonna add the extra new crickets. So this is what's crazy, is when I dumped them all, and this is 500 crickets. Last time we bought them, I swear it was only like 200, but anyway, this is a lot of crickets, and the very first thing that they do, because they've been traveling in that box for a while, is they have a drink. They all congregate to the drinking pads and get rehydrated. But yeah, okay. these are our crickets that our little bearded dragon will eat. Who knew that I'd ever feel comfortable with a pet that eats crickets, but... Whoops. Woo. Woo. But we love her. We love her. This is Sophie's tooth. She wants me to say, I'll put a warning and say grossness ahead. I don't know. I feel like this way grosser no, than this. No, because those don't come from your mouth. Yeah, but they And mouths have germs. But they could crawl in your mouth. But then you just eat them. Yuck. And um, you should try putting them on avocado toast. Crickets and avocado toast? It, I'll I'm make it for you chef. tomorrow. Oh, you should eat it. No way. And this, my friends, is why we have the entire property fenced in. Why, you ask, Laura, why? Because your husband phones you on the phone and says, Penny, stop. Through the barn. Oh. Because your husband randomly phones you and says, Laura, the horses got free. Sophie, but we need Molly. Where's Gabby? Having a shower. Of course, only two got free, and we caught them. I don't want her to run. Oh, of course. She walks right to Sam. Grab her hair. Oh, that's a girl. Come to Mama. Good girl, yeah. I got carrots, sweet princess. Oh, good girl. Look at that carrot. Yeah. Here, take this. There we go. Oh, my gosh. That was terrifying. My fault. Yeah, it's definitely your fault. The line was down, so I went in to go fix it. How did it get down? I don't know, but it was down. I went to go fix it, and they must have pushed the door open to the back. Oh my God, you're but joking! Gracie came and told me. Oh my God! Gracie uh, walked over to me and was like looking at me and go, "What's wrong?" And, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> the other horses are. Like, so <laughs> she went. Where were she I went? Like she went back into the back corner to tell you. Gracie's such a good horse. Here, Pen. Thank you for good for not running off. 
Good girl, Gracie. All right, I don't know if you guys figured out what happened. I'll explain it. Yeah, don't laugh about it. Good girl for coming in. I'm like, well, they're bound There you go, that's for telling. That's for telling that they did that. Well, you don't care. Oh, man. What a way to wake up. I was napping. I never nap. Every once in a while, I just feel tired. I, I lay down know. on the couch. I put I my phone really in my lap. I'm like, oh, I just could have a rest. Hey, so, so then suddenly, I just woke up. Like, I only sleep. If I do nap, which is very rare, it's only for like five minutes. And then, so I'm just laying there, waking up on the couch. And all of a sudden, my phone starts vibrating. And when Sam's outside, I don't know why, I always get bad feelings like something's happening. Because even though he's my knight in shining armor, and he always makes amazing things happen in our life, sometimes some of the worst things that have ever happened in our life are about Sam too. I feel like it's always Dad who now just says the horses are out. So anyways, he's like, like you guys need to get down here right now. The horses are out. And I come down, and Penny's standing there looking at me, and she's looking at me, and she starts walking towards me, and I'm like, she's coming to me. Like, that's how much she loves me. She's just coming right to me. Telling and you then we got this far apart, and she's like, oh, ew, and she took off into the grass. And then a Willow also, who, who was just standing there. Like, when the boys get out, Storm's already got a plan, like where they're going, and they are actually leaving the farm. Anyways, so you saw the rest of it. Gabby is in the shower. Yeah, like you guys might be wondering, where the heck is Gabby? Yeah, in the shower. But I mean, to be fair, her horse didn't do anything bad. So, apparently, the fence was down in the back and the horses didn't escape. They would never have crossed it because it was still electrified. And Sam came to fix it because he was cutting grass and he saw it. And when he came in, he just pulled this behind him. He didn't like make sure it was latched. And the horse is just. Penny probably pushed it open. And probably Gracie pushed it open because that's what she does, though. Gracie came after She me. probably pushed it open and then walked, was like, whoa, what am I going to do? And then all the other horses just went through it. Like maybe if I go to him, he'll give me a treat. And then Gracie ran as fast as she could. She's a snitcher. <laughs> Gracie, you're a snitcher. <gasps> she's a snitcher. She ran and she told Sam. What? What? How did? What did you think when you saw Gracie? I don't know, she just came up to me in the corner, and I was like, "What do you want?" Like, All right, I'm done fixing your fence, and I walk around the barn, and I see the horses are out. <laughs> Penny pickle. You know, Penny's fault. Yeah. So, anyways, crisis averted. We like. We've set our farm up so that even if they get out, for the most part, it's Gabby okay. Uh, but me. we saw some kinks in our. He's closing the door. He's paranoid. <laughs> He's closing the door. He's paranoid now. We saw some kinks in our armor, but that's how you test it. That's okay, so uh, but before we end today's video, I gotta tell you guys that every single person I know, and I know a lot of them, every single horse owner that I know personally has had horses get out recently, this year, last year, some of them multiple times, some of them all like- All of our horses have gotten out before. Yeah, now officially all of our horses except for Gracie. Oh yeah, Gracie too. They've all gotten out at some point. And they it, all go out in a group. And they make a funneling system. Hate as much as you want, yeah, but it happens know. with horses. Okay, and we I mean, have I'm done the best so that we could to make yeah, sure that I'm, it's a safe well, situation like, if they do get out. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I've been called at night in the morning during the day, come help me catch the horses. <laughs> oh, so one time when I was downstairs taking care of, taking care of my dog, um, I said, are you guys ready to go? Cause Gracie's standing outside. She's outside the field, just standing there eating grass. Yeah, so anyways, hate whatever. I just gotta tell you that it happens. It happens to all of us. Like, you cannot believe the stories that I've heard from friends and local people, people who are not afraid to talk about real life and be real and have things happen because it, it happens, you guys. It happens. But we set it up good so that they wouldn't get hurt. So that's so good. Don't you know that you're beautiful? Just the way you are, just the way you came Don't you know that you're beautiful? Don't you know that you're beautiful?